Hello everyone. In the previous video, we analyzed firm's cost minimization problem. A firm tries to maximize its output subject to the cost constraint, as can be seen in this graph where the ISO cost line is tangent to the ISO quant curve that provides the point of equilibrium and the firm hires L1 star of labor and K1 star units of capital. Now we extend our analysis to see the relationship between the long run and the short run cost curves of a competitive firm. Let us start with the isoquant map. We know that the higher the isoquant curve in the map, the higher is the level of output. If the firm wants to produce a higher level of output, more cost would be required. Suppose that the economy is in the long run. In this case, the equilibrium requires that the ISO cost line must be tangent to the ISO quant curve. It is possible that in the long run, if firm wants to produce more of the output, it increases its cost and then can achieve the higher level of output by increasing both labor and capital. Because both labor and capital are varying with the output level, therefore, all the costs are variable costs in the long run. If we join the equilibrium points, we can get what is called the output expansion path. The output expansion path shows the combination of labor and capital such that the cost is minimized given the output firm wants to produce. As we see that the higher output requires the more cost, therefore we can draw the long run cost curve. Now suppose that the firm is in the short run and there is a constraint on capital that capital is fixed. The firm has to produce output level Q0 with the capital fixed at K0. In this case, what we observe is that the tangency condition meets at the point where the long run equilibrium exists. This implies that our long run cost and the short run total cost Inside. What if the firm wants to produce Q1 level of output in the economy? If the cost constraint is there with the capital fixed at K1 in the short run, again we see that the short run equilibrium and the long run equilibrium coincide. So our short run total cost and the long run total cost would be the same. We can show it as another point B on the curve. And likewise for the third case where if the capital is fixed at level 2 and the firm wants to produce output level Q2 in the economy, uh, the short run cost and the long run cost would coincide with each other, would be the same. So this point is mentioned as C in the long run total cost curve. Now suppose that the firm wants to produce output level Q0. However, the capital constraint is K1. In this case, the firm is not able to produce higher level of output. Thus, what we observe is to produce Q0 level with capital K1, there is a constraint such that firm has higher short run cost, which is shown in the right panel where we have the short run cost curve for output level Q0 given the capital level K0, which is when the economy is in the long run and the constraint is K bar 2. So this point A here in the picture represents the equilibrium in the long run as well as the short run when the firm requires K bar 2 both in the short run and in the long run such that the tangency condition is met. Now suppose that the firm wants to produce output level Q1 in the short run. Because the capital is fixed at K1 bar, we observe that the point of tangency holds for both the short run and the long run curve. Therefore, we have point B in the second picture. So we draw a short run cost curve such that the long run cost curve touches the short run total cost curve at point B. This is corresponding to output level Q1 when the capital is fixed at K1 bar. 
Finally, what if the firm wants to produce Q2 output in the short run? Again, the capital is fixed at level K1 bar. Because of this constraint, the firm is unable to produce at the point of tangency, which holds for the long run equilibrium. Therefore, we observe the short run costs are higher than the long run costs. The equilibrium would take place at point C, which is represented in figure two, where we see that the long run total cost and the short run total cost touch each other at point C. From this analysis, we see that there is a unique point on the short run cost curve where the short run cost and the long run total cost are the same. Thus, we can consider the long run total cost curve as the lower envelope of the short run total cost curves. To find the short run average cost, we divide short run total cost by quantity. For the first short run total cost SC naught, we get the short run average cost curve as SAC naught, and point A represents the, the equilibrium in the short run as shown in the first uh, panel of the picture. Then we see that uh, for the second case, output level Q1, the short run and the long run total cost were the same. That means that we would have short run average cost curve uh, and the long run average cost curve same as at point B, which represents the minimum. Then we can draw our third short run average cost curve, SAC2, the equilibrium point C as shown in the first picture here. We now observe that we have situation where the short run average cost and the long run average cost curve must be the same. Therefore, we can uh, think of the firm producing along this first plot according to this cost curve here. It comes to this point and then the two costs are the same. If the firm uses the first plan, then the cost would be the same as from the second plan. But if it produces further and uh, goes along the short run average cost curve not, then the cost would be higher. So the firm should abandon that plan and moves to the second average cost curve. Then it moves along that curve until the point where the two average cost curves are intersecting each other. And onwards, it then moves along the short run average cost curve too. Now we see that the long run average cost curve becomes the lower envelope of the short run average cost curves. And if we have several short run average cost curves, the long run average cost curve is a smooth U-shaped curve. Now we derive the long run marginal cost curve. First, we draw the short run marginal cost curves that will pass through the minimum of the short run average cost curves. We have SMC1. We see that the firm was producing at point A. So corresponding to this output level, why not we observe that marginal cost is MC0 and the point is denoted by E0. Likewise, we draw the short run marginal cost curve 1, which passes through the minimum of the short run average cost curve 1. And the intersection point is denoted by E1. Finally, for SAC2, we have SMC2. And corresponding to point C, we observe that the short run marginal cost is equivalent to point E2. Now we got three points, E0, E1, and E2, which represent the short run marginal cost curves. If the firm have to produce output Y0, Y1, and Y2 in the long run, then the marginal cost firm would face would be equivalent to the value corresponding to points E0, E1, and E2. If we have several short run average cost curves and a family of short run marginal cost curves, and we take all those points, then by joining all those points, what we observe is the long run marginal cost curve of the firm. So in this way, 
we have seen that how we can establish a relationship between the long run and the short run cost curves. The key point to remember is that the long run total cost curve is the lower envelope of the families of the short run cost curves. Likewise, the long run average cost curve is the lower envelope of the family of short run average cost curves. This completes my analysis of the long run and the short run cost curves. Thank you very much.